And of course, if you happen to be able to show me so much art from a specific period and you show me, look, in this period, 80%, 70% of the art looks very dark-skinned individuals and then we examine the pigments and we're like, yeah, this is actually, this is real. A lot of more people were black in this specific dynasty or in this specific section of Egypt, then I'll be more than happy to readjust my percentages. In this video, YouTuber Metatron is challenging us to prove the amount of black people that existed in ancient Egypt to assess if it was a black civilization. At first glance, this might seem like a valid question, doesn't it? But I have already answered all these questions in previous videos, and I advise him and his followers to watch my videos to learn about that. But first, let's watch his full statements. Within my multi-ethnic position. And of course, if you happen to be able to show me so much art from a specific period, and you show me, look, in this period, 80%, 70% of the art looks very dark-skinned individuals and then we examine the pigments and we're like, yeah, this is actually, this is real. A lot of more people were black in this specific dynasty or in this specific section of Egypt, then I'll be more than happy to readjust my percentages, but it's still multi-ethnic for me, until you can prove the 99%, like Mr. Imhotep puts it, of all Egyptians were black throughout the entirety of ancient Egyptian history, all the way up to the Romans and the Greeks arriving, which is a very hard thing to defend, because all I need is to find one pharaoh and be like, okay, this guy, genetic testing, he was not black, and that's already a problem, which is why I think sometimes you attack so vehemently any proof or any archaeological piece of evidence that shows a significant contribution from the Near East. Because in by doing so, that's a problem, because if it becomes 95%, if it becomes 91%, that it's not all black, which is the position that I believe you're trying to defend. Much harder. And here is my answer. I looked and found all these pieces. People tend to use them as evidence. And that's true. There are many statues of ancient Egyptians that are entirely white. But here is the issue that's not their original state. This issue actually concerns all the art of antiquity, especially in ancient Greece and Rome. Their statues were originally painted, but they have been whitewashed later. But let's go back to our topic. Let's take this statue for example. It's clearly white, right? But when we zoom in, here's what we see. Do you notice these traces of dark brown pigments? These are traces of its original hue. This statue wasn't originally white. It lost its color with time. Here are other examples. You can see the same issue. So, basically, the Chemites never depicted themselves white skinned. While doing my re We've all heard of the so-called black pharaohs from Kush. These pharaohs are presented as the only black pharaohs, as if the others were not black. The problem is that as soon as we really start studying Kemet in depth, it becomes obvious that there have never been any indigenous white pharaohs, despite what we've been told. However, when looking at ancient Egyptian art, it's obvious that a great majority, if not all, of the pharaohs and the majority of their people were dark-skinned, and I can support that statement with these images. Here we see that the ancient Egyptians sculpted their rulers in stone, and they sculpted black and dark-skinned people. We can all see it. So, most people live in an illusion that ancient Egyptians were white or at least not black. In the excerpt, Meta challenged me to prove things to him, while he shows no evidence of the opposite. The most problematic aspect of his claims is that, by framing them in this manner, he implies that the indigenous inhabitants of that African country weren't black. This creates the false impression that Kemet was a multiracial civilization with modern Europeans, Arabs, Indians, and then a minority of black people. It suggests that black Egyptians were merely one among several groups in a civilization that belonged to some mysterious non-black original race. So, every race was indigenous and contributed to the making of that civilization. Thus, he completely inverts the historical narrative. Since he spent nearly 90% of his response video to say that he wasn't a liar, I will assume that it is simply due to a lack of knowledge regarding ancient Egyptian history. As he has himself admitted it in the past, it's obviously not his specialty. I've already addressed this in this video. This might appear amusing, given that the ancient Egyptians constructed the Great Sphinx amidst the pyramids as a reminder of their identity. Yet, 
Individuals often overlook this evidence, instead using the visages of modern Mediterranean people to suggest that they were the architects of the pyramids. Do you notice the contradiction? But let's go back to our topic. Why does saying that Egypt was multi-ethnic is problematic? Well, that statement implies that everyone came and created that civilization, making it completely impersonal. It belongs to everyone and to no one at the same time. But is it true? Do the creators of ancient Egypt really came from everywhere? Or at least from the Mediterranean area? I precise that I'm talking about the creators. Because that's all that matters. I have heard theories about the ancient people coming from the Middle East, from Mesopotamia, or being European Atlanteans, or even aliens. Is it true? My savvy followers already know the answers to these questions. I have treated them in the following videos. But let's look at it through a different angle. Who were the builders of that civilization? But first, what is a civilization? Prominent social scientists like V. Gordon Child have identified several distinguishing traits that set civilizations apart from other societal forms. Civilizations have been distinguished by their means of subsistence, types of livelihood, settlement patterns, forms of government, social stratification, economic systems, literacy, and other cultural traits, like cultural identity. Meaning a state-based decision-making apparatus, a literature, professional art, architecture, organized religion, and complex customs of education, coercion, and control associated with maintaining the elite. Therefore, to prove that ancient Egypt was a multi-ethnic or more precisely, multiracial civilization on its core, we need these specific elements to originate from various ethnic groups. For example, the religion to come from the Levantines, the writing system to come from Europeans, the architecture to come from Asiatics, etc. But is it the case? Greece and Rome became empires at some point. They encompassed parts of Africa and Asia, but do you ever hear people say that these were multi-ethnic civilizations? No. Because we all know that despite that late melting pot, it was created in a specific area by a specific group of people. There is never a debate about it. But why does that rule don't apply to ancient Egypt? Let's play a game and analyze the origins of the elements that define the Egyptian civilization. What is the origin of? The architecture of Kemet? It came from Nubia. The religion of Kemet? It came from Nubia. The writing system of Kemet? It emerged in Nubia. The kingship traditions of Kemet? It also emerged in Nubia. The gods of Kemet? They came from Nubia and Inner Africa. The mummification process of Kemet? It also came from Africa and was practiced by black Africans before the creation of Kemet. The first kings of Kemet? They came from Nubia and then conquered the north. In other words, all elements defining the Egyptian civilization or nation came from black Africa and were initially practiced by black Africans. The Great Sphinx itself has the face of a black man in that area supposed to be the land of Mediterranean people. So, why does the Sphinx doesn't look like a typical modern Mediterranean like some seems to suggest? Because either they looked like Africans, their rulers looked like Africans, or both. This is the Dutch soccer team. Is it multi-ethnic? Absolutely. However, would you ever assert that the Dutch civilization or nation is genuinely multi-ethnic, implying that it was established by individuals from all these diverse ethnicities? Let's be honest. Between me and you, you know that the answer will be, absolutely not. It's clear that it was established by European Dutch and later absorbed other groups through processes such as colonization, migration, and immigration. Similarly, ancient Egypt underwent multiple invasions and occupations by non-African groups, events that triggered genetic and phenotypic alterations, corroborated by numerous scientists. In other words, it was created by indigenous Africans coming from numerous Southern African ethnic groups and who were perfectly adapted to their tropical environment. Implying that these individuals were black people originating from Africa, residing in a region that remained exclusively populated by individuals of African descent. Despite all this evidence, the global narrative remains that Egypt was a multi-ethnic or multiracial civilization that belongs to everyone. <laughs>
Now, I want to provide one final clarification to prevent any future misunderstandings. My statements regarding Ancient Egypt. Ancient Egypt was an indigenous black African civilization, meaning that it was imagined, built, and ruled by indigenous black and dark-skinned people mainly of African origin. Through time, with their conquests of foreign kingdoms and their ingenuity, the black African men who built what has been the greatest civilization on earth for millennia became so powerful that they attracted foreigners, especially women from the Middle East and the Mediterranean region due to the proximity. And some of them started taking them as their spouses. Power attracts women, and that's normal. This increased the diversity of the genetic pool. So, they got some descendants whose appearance started to seriously diverge from the original black African look of their ancestors due to some of their mother's lineages. But the civilization in itself was a black African institution rooted in Africa. I talk about it in this video. Meta, by claiming it was multi-ethnic, wrongly attributes some of the merit to mysterious non-black foreign men who supposedly brought technology to build it in Africa. Some foreign men came later, invaded it, and tried to usurp that indigenous black African heritage by blending in and making their faces the official representation of that civilization. But that's a lie. Kemet is the accomplishment of black African men. And this makes sense when we remember that throughout 99.9% .9 of human existence on this planet, the predominant phenotype has been black, especially in and around Africa. Africa Today Today, all African countries are multi-ethnic and even multiracial. Yes, it sounds surprising, but it's true. In all of them, there are Chinese people, white people, Indians, and others living as expats, businessmen, refugees, or in other capacities. So, does this foreign presence mean that these countries are inherently multiracial and belong to all these groups? No. And that's the same with ancient Egypt. It was a black African institution with migrants, ambitious businessmen, refugees, etc. What Meta is trying to do in his video is to use the diversity to make it appear as a multiracial institution at its core. The Bible Argument I don't like to use the Bible as historical source, but even that book implies that foreigners were living as refugees in Kemet. Jesus, Joseph, Abraham but were they considered Egyptians? No. They were foreigners who joined a civilization that had already been built by Africans. The Army Evidence Here is a depiction of the Egyptian army during the Middle Kingdom before invasions and mass migrations. The country was still mainly indigenous. Does it appear multi-ethnic to you? No. All the soldiers depicted are black men with afros. If it were such a melting pot, one would expect to see whites, Indians, Arabs, etc. But that's not the case. Only black African men with beautiful afros. Now, let's look at these beautiful palettes from Kemet's early days. On the left, it is the palette of Narmer, which is well known. It depicts the Kemites taming a serpent part, symbolizing chaos. This suggests that the indigenous people successfully conquered the entire territory. The men depicted represent the natives and the elite of the country. This is another palette from around the same period. It is called the Battlefield Palette, representing the defeat of the enemies of the southern pharaoh and their capture. So, these men represent the indigenous inhabitants of the Delta region. If you look carefully, you will notice that on both depictions, the men share a similar phenotype with a little twist. Both the victorious Upper Egyptians and the defeated Lower Egyptians have Afro hair, meaning that a big portion of the Egyptian population was black. In other words, we have black people in the south and black people in the north. Keep in mind that all of these palettes Lower Egyptians have Afro hair. All of them. Once again, there is a lack of racial diversity, which makes a very strong statement. There may have been some people with different phenotypes around the Eastern Delta as those being defeated and executed by Narma here, but it looks like they were a minority of the population living in the Eastern Delta in the beginning. The Modern Argument 
To this day, North Africans, and especially most Egyptians, belong to the Sub-Saharan male lineage E, meaning that if they are connected to ancient populations of the area, their ancestors were most definitely black African men. The only reason they look ambiguous today is because they are mixed. Some of their mothers carry non-African mitochondrial DNAs while others are direct descendants of foreigners who invaded or migrated later. My challenge. This proves that we are the ones with evidence here. So, Meta, show us these non-melanated Egyptians in ancient art and in significant numbers first. Because, as far as we all know, the average pigment used by Chemites was dark brown, and the average hair type seems to be Afro hair, as I have proven in this video as well. What does science say about Egyptians' hair? Tricology is the study of hair. Using a trichometer, it measures the cross-section of a hair shaft, and can reveal a person's race. The result is an index that varies depending on ethnicity. In the 1970s, Czech anthropologist Eugen Strau published a research on ancient Egyptian hair. The texture of the hair samples was diverse, wavy to curly. He observed that pre-dynastic Egyptians had hair varying from 35 to 65. Another study revealed that hair samples from the 18th to the 25th dynasties had an average value of 51. Dr. Pruner Bay analyzed further hair samples in 1877, and the average index was 64.4. The average of modern human hair is between 60, the kinkiest, and 110, the straightest. This is the averages of hair cross-sections by race. Ancient Egyptians are rated between this and this. As you can see, all European anthropologists came to the same conclusion. Ancient Egyptians had Afro hair. So, this isn't a debate. Our detractors must prove that the population of Kemet was significantly non-black during the dynastic period. Because we have all the evidence of an indigenous black or dark-skinned elite and population in that civilization. The Great Sphinx is still there, magnificent. And all experts have admitted that it was phenotypically the representation of a black African man. Isn't that enough evidence? That the builders of the greatest and oldest wonder of the ancient world, the only one that is still standing, were black Africans? We have genetic, anthropological, and cultural evidence of the blackness of the Chemites. I want to add that this platform isn't anti-white people. I use studies from white scholars, evidence that I don't have any racism problem. When I talk about racists and liars, I address specific people in academia, in this sphere, and even in Meta's audience, who are racists, liars, and ignorance. I even receive insults and racist comments every day. So, to all people who are interested in learning the truth, don't fall for that straw man. The healing process requires all of us to get out of the brainwashing. If you are good intentioned, willing to question your beliefs, and you want to learn true history, you are welcomed. So, what do you think about my conclusion? Do you agree with me, or do you think that Meta has the right to challenge me despite not showing any evidence of the opposite? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching Mr. Mhotep's channel, and make sure to subscribe and activate the bell. See you in the next one.